Hello, my name is Stephen Martin Pinto and I'm running for District 7 Supervisor. I'm running because I want to bring accountability, honesty, integrity, and common sense back to San Francisco government. First question, let's see what we got here. What was the biggest thing you bought with your first paycheck? Well, my first job in college, I uh, helped support myself by being a wildland firefighter. I worked for the Mendocino National Forest. I really enjoyed it, had a lot of fun, and we were out pretty much all summer and I made a lot of money and I bought a, uh, a used Subaru station wagon for about $2,700. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And uh, I, I, still, I, th I still think it's pretty cool, despite what everybody said. <laughs> What's your favorite movie ever and why does it top your list? One movie that I keep on coming back to, if I see it on TV, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, I'll drop what I'm doing and I'll watch it. It's gotta be Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. I remember seeing it in the theaters when I was seven years old in 1985. I remember laughing a lot and whenever I see it, especially the, uh, the end uh, chase scene, I still laugh like I did when I was seven years old. If you could plan an outdoor adventure with friends, uh, what would you do? I would say I love uh, mountain climbing. When I came back from Afghanistan in 2012, me and my two best friends from high school, we climbed Mount Whitney. I thought it was an incredible adventure. I loved the uh, experience, I loved the view on top, and uh, I would say if, if I could plan an outdoor adventure again, uh, let's do it again, or let's climb Mount Shasta. What's your most used app on your phone, and why do you love it? Well, this one's pretty easy, it's Twitter, or X as I call it now. I love it because every intelligent thought or dumb thought uh, I have, I can put it on Twitter and uh, people react to it right away. It gets conversations going. It actually gives me a lot of ideas too and a lot of things to think about. So it's a good conversation starter and I've actually met a lot of friends that way. What's the most exciting part of your day? I would say probably mid-morning. I like to go to the gym. I like to uh, take the dog out for a walk, go get coffee, talk with the neighbors. Um, that's probably the most exciting part of my day because it really, it's a great way to kind of start the day to get the energy flowing. Uh, nothing stimulates the mind and the body like a good workout. Are you an animal lover? If so, uh, what's your spirit animal and why? I'm definitely an animal lover. I have chickens at home. I'm more of a dog person. When I was in Georgia, the country on deployment, I actually brought back two stray dogs. Uh, my spirit animal is gotta be the American bison. To me, it seems uh, wise, uh, peaceful, but also very fiercely protective of its own. So those are um, characteristics I look up to. Uh, besides English and your native language, do you speak any other languages? Yeah, I grew up speaking Spanish. My grandparents were from Ecuador and I was often uh, babysat by them. From my time in the military, I spent a lot of time overseas. I was in Georgia, the country for about eight months and I actually learned how to speak Georgian pretty well by the end of my tour there. Besides that, I also speak a little bit, little bit of Russian because I also speak that over there. And that I have used in my job. When I worked in the Richmond district as a firefighter EMT, a lot of uh, our patients, a lot of uh, people we would interact with were Russian. So it was a chance for me to use Russian and I was excited to do it. Running of the Bulls in Spain, okay. Union Square, Golden Gate Bridge, Ghirardelli Square. I gotta say Ghirardelli Square. Uh, the reason is because um, you gotta make it fun. I mean, running for the Bulls is uh, obviously kind of uh, intimidating, but if you, uh, there's plenty of places to hide if a bull started to chase you, and if you were able to find a place to hide, there would most likely be lots of tasty chocolate. So that would make it more fun. Mardi Gras, San Francisco City Hall, Golden Gate Park, Chinatown. I gotta say Chinatown. I think it'd be an interesting mix. Chinatown already has Grand Street, which is a pretty uh, good street to have a festival on. And I think Mardi Gras would be a a good place for that. I can't think of any other place in the city, actually, besides uh, Grand Street.
Golden Gate Heights. I think Golden Gate Heights has some of the best views in the city, especially on a clear day. I wish the, uh, the parks there on top of uh, Golden Gate Heights and above Rivera Street, for example, I wish they were uh, maybe a little bit better maintained. I wish we had a little bit more native plants and uh, horticulture there. Balboa Terrace. I love the uh, architecture of the homes in Balboa Terrace. I think there's a uh, few places in San Francisco that have homes that look like that. It's also a park neighborhood as well. And it has those little alleyways, pedestrian alleyways between homes that go, I think, east, west, and uh, north, south. There's not much to really say bad about it, to be honest. Uh, I guess the only thing I could say is uh, I wish they um, they took care, better care of the, uh, or the gardens on the side between Juniper Serra Boulevard and Juniper Serra Frontage were a little bit better maintained. That's all. You will be able to see the San Francisco Hotel or the San Francisco Hotel in the discussion. Please tell us your thoughts. California Prop 33, expansion of rent control. I am not for this. I, you know, rent control is one of those uh, policies where it has good intentions, but oftentimes it has bad outcomes. And, you know, I'm not for eliminating rent control for units that are already being rented out. However, every economic study shows that rent control in the long term leads to uh, more expensive housing costs. And I can't support a policy that uh, does that. So I'm gonna vote no on this one. California Prop 32, minimum wage increases to $18 an hour by 2026. I think oftentimes when you do that, it actually has a lot of uh, unintended effects. Companies tend to hire less, so there's less workers working. And I gotta say no to this one. I think uh, we need to rely more on market forces versus government legislation to uh, control wage rates. So I gotta say no on this one. I think a lot of younger workers, teenage workers, high school workers, young adults would be missing out on job opportunities if this were to happen. SF ballot measure, police staffing and deferred retirement. I have to say yes to this one. Uh, we are in a incredible public safety staffing shortage. And unfortunately, we, we're having a hard time hiring more police officers. I think this is a way to incentivize police officers to remain and hopefully delay further the um, mass retirement that we'll be facing here pretty shortly if we don't hire more uh, police officers. So it's not a perfect proposition, but I think it's one that's necessary right now. All right, uh, thank you for having me here. I had a great time answering these questions when it comes to the election in November, November 5th. Remember to vote common sense, vote integrity, vote honesty, vote Pinto. Thank you.